Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, where today we will be painting a World War I German infantryman produced by Phalanx Consortium in support of Blood and Valor. Now, the way I started with this model is I primed it in a gray. Now, I normally use standard Mechanicus gray put out by Games Workshop. You can also use uniform gray by Army Painter. Or for metal, what I really like is Krylon. Gray primer. Great on metal, widely available, and probably the most cost-effective option you're going to find. Now, when we paint this model, uh, we are not going to use contrast paints, technical paints. We are just going to use standard base paints you can find in the Games Workshop starter paint sets, any of the Army Painters starter paint sets, or the ones put out by WizKids or Vallejo. So, let's talk about the brushes we used for my little guy. Pretty much just the fine tip ones to paint the various straps and uniforms. And to wash him, I used my destroyed brushes. So to throw the wash on, I have one brush that I've beaten to hell. Honestly, you probably get away with just one finely uh, tipped brush. So two brushes, you're good to go. All right, so for the uniform, I use mostly Vallejo from their World War II German paint set. So German field gray was his uniform. His gaiters were German camouflage beige, and his boots were German camouflage medium brown. Then to do his skin, I used... Iron arc base skin, that's just uh, after I prime gray, just make it white again, paint it with Barbarian Flesh, and then wash it Reichlin Flesh Shade. Now most of the rest of his uniform, after I put on three colors, uh, oh, I used XV-88 for a different type of brown for the rifle stock and uh, some of his other... Uh, Coutrements attached to his belt, black for his gas mask and bayonet sheath. So I used XV-88 for that. So everything was washed with Nuln Oil. So for the highlighting, which I did do, for his helmet, which was standard Mechanicus Gray. Mechanicus Gray washed with Nuln Oil, highlighted with Ash Gray. Abaddon Black for his rifle barrel and his chin strap. Xandri dust to highlight uh, the brown bits once they're done being washed. And lip belcher just to highlight the touches of the black from his rifle barrel. So pretty common available paints. Don't use worry about using the exact shades I have. Use whatever you can find in a starter set. All right, so let's get to painting this guy. All right, to get started, I'm going to paint his tunic and trousers. And for that, I dipped into my World War II paint sets and pulled out German camo dark green. And this is uh, by Vallejo. So we'll give this a shake. Since we're only doing one model at this time, we'll only need a little drop. find my paintbrush and I'm just going to go around paint him up so now we painted his tunic and uniform next I'm going to cover his gaiters and his boots and for the gaiters I'm going to be using a Vallejo German Camouflage Beige from World War II. So, this goes on pretty quickly. Alright, 
right, so the gaiters are done. And for the boots, I'm going with Vallejo's German Camo Medium Brown, also from the World War II German infantry set. So you can see just adding three colors, he's starting to come around and see where he's going. All right, as I wait for those to dry, I think I will texture his base. So I used a bolt action base, glued on the metal, and I used some green stuff to kind of even out that drop between the metal base and the bolt action base. But to finish it off, I'm going to use some sterling mud. I'm just going to put that around, and I'll be back in a moment. Now, I am going to use some Abaddon Black, and there's actually only a couple places I'm going to paint pla black. So, he's got little ammo cases. It's tough to see on this model since he's holding his rifle there, but you can see he's got little ammo cases on his belt there, so we're going to paint those black. And we're going to paint this cartridge back here black. So I need that one, and I need these guys here. So I have the black on the little ammo pouches up front. I've got black on the little gas mask canister back here. So now I am going to use some XV88, and I'm going to paint his... Uh, it's tactical webbing, so I'm going to paint these little suspenders here, the little uh, strap connecting to his um, gas mask, and his belt, and his little pouch, and these little uh, bayonet cases over here. So, let's get our paint shaken up, and I use a fine detail brush when I'm down to this stage, because a lot of these historical minis a lot of little details. And for these belts, you can just take flat of your brush and just run it down the raised metal edge. Just let the raised metal edge guide your brush down. And we'll probably also use it for the stock of the rifle. Don't worry about getting it on his hands or anything. We'll touch that up later. All right, so we finished painting in the straps using our brown. I went back and I changed the bayonet sheath and the bayonet to black just to make it pop out from the rest of uh, his rig there. So now I'm going to take some dark metal color, in this case lead belcher. And what I'm going to do with it is there's a couple parts that are going to look like shiny metal eventually. So I'm just going to take one of my tiny brushes, like that, and he's got a little belt buckle back here. Then the other spot I want to get is, uh, just to give it some interest, right there, and the exposed metal edges of the bayonet. There we go. Now, the next color I'm going to work with is Mechanicus Standard Gray, a dark gray. And the areas I'm going to paint with that is his little canteen back off his right hip. I'm going to make that gray. And also his helmet. So 
So I'm doing this guy at the transition point from 1916 to 1917. Not super familiar with German uniforms. But every year there's always some variance in there. All right, so we finished painting on the gray on the canteen and on the helmet. So happy so far with where my model's going. Now I'm going to take some Nuln oil. We'll shake this up. So what this is is a wash, and I I'm going to apply it using one of my garbage brushes because neatness doesn't count in this case. Now what the wash will do is it'll change the tint of the model and I don't want to put a lot on. Some models I like to just rub it and wash. Here I just want a light coating to go over the model. And you'll see what it does is it darkens down that gray paint and it darkens down the browns and what I'm trying to show is wood. What, what it's going to do is not just dark it down, but the liquid will flow into the crevices of the model. So you can see these little gaiters there. It goes down in the folds, so it'll actually simulate some of the light conditions that I'm looking for. Give him shadow, the appearance of shadow, which will make him look more three-dimensional, give him the model some more depth. All right. So it's going to take a while for that guy to dry, unless I use a hair dryer. Oh, don't forget the underneath. All right, so now we'll hair dryer him, uh, and then we'll come back. All right, so I finished putting in the black of the rifle barrel and his chin strap. So now I'm going to start highlighting. So where the wash worked into the low areas of the model, I want the highlights to sit on the high ends of the model, to the raised surfaces. And for that I'm going to start with his gaiters. And I originally painted them with German beige. Now I'm going to just take my tiny brush. And I can see where there are the grooves for each wrap that he did. And so I'm just going to hit the high point. Are those uh, little straps there? Now the thickness and the intensity of the highlight lines is up for your taste. This will just be little slight ones on the apex of where the little wraps are supposed to be. Don't want to go out into the grooves that I washed. Now I have the gaiters highlighted. I'm going to go around and highlight the brown and for that I'm going to use a Zandri dust. So I just want a couple for whatever brown that I used on that model and then washed, I want a couple shades lighter. So since we used a dark brown on a lot of this, just use a light brown. All right, and just a little bit of paint. And just a couple spots on the brown. And this will just, just enough to create a little contrast. A 
I do around the little folds of the letter here. I'll just keep on going around doing some of the raised surfaces and the stock of the rifle. Alright, so I highlighted the brown. Now I'm going to use some standard Mechanicus Gray to put some highlights on his uniform. When you're doing historical models, highlights are nice, but don't get carried away with them. So I'm just going to put a couple there, and the idea is wherever light would catch a fold in the fabric. So a good way to do this is just to look down at the model and say, okay, the light is coming down from top. So I'm just going to use the flat part of my brush to catch those folds and his little epaulets. So the idea being is I want to see the detail of my model from at least three to four feet away since that's how far away I'm going to be when I'm playing on the table. So I finished highlighting his uniform with uh, Mechanicus Gray. I also did the black of his bayonet scabbard and his gas mask container. So now we're going to do, there's some other objects we painted Mechanicus Gray. And if we highlighted them with Mechanicus Gray, probably wouldn't pop as much. So we got the canteen and the helmet, and for that, I'm going to use a light gray. In this case, Army Painter's Ash Gray. I just need a drop of that. Even that's probably too much. Just going to cut around. If you ever put it in a little too much, get it quick. You can probably just wipe it off. There, nice thin line. I'm just going to hug around the edge of his Stahlhelm and then just touch some lines here around his canteen. When you're feeling brave, you can just put a little dot on his chin strap. Don't recommend. So try to paint a little reflection where the light would catch. And then a little bit on the reverse. Excellent. We're almost done. So the last thing I want to do is highlight his skin. In this case, I am going to go back to the Army Painter. So using the Barbarian Flesh, I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to, too much paint, alright, I'm going to touch his nose, his cheekbones, just some of the raised surfaces. Uh, I don't even try to do eyes anymore. I never see them anyway. All right, then we'll do his hands. And here I'll just outline his fingers and just dab around his palm. I mean, sorry, the back of his hand. If you think that his hands look dirty, good. 
It's the way they're supposed to look. Next thing you want to do, um, I'm going to use leather brown, but you can use whatever color will match the surface of the table you're playing on. Make sure to not to pick a brown that matches the shoes. That way it doesn't look like his feet are disappearing. Unless that's what you're going for, saying that his feet are so covered with mud that they're disappearing into it. So, there's our Phalanx Consortium, World War I German Infantry. Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.